the most famous Russian psychic is no longer living. Her name was Nina Kulagina. During a long career, she appeared to move all sorts of things through the power of her mind. Now that the media are no longer strictly controlled, there's a vast new audience for the paranormal on Russian television. Every night, a program called The Stars Speak precedes the news with an astrological forecast. The psychic Kasparovsky has even used television to demonstrate his claimed ability to control pain. In this case, during a live operation. There are even commercials that extol the miraculous. During the Cold War, both the Soviets and the Americans carried out research on psychic warfare. At one time, there was fear in the Pentagon about a psychic or psi gap. The Russians claimed some success with psychic mind control, but their evidence was sketchy. So, I was interested to find that scientists at the prestigious mm -hmm. Institute of the Brain in Moscow had reported measuring psychic effects under test conditions. I arranged to observe the experiment. Uh -huh. The data they'd collected in their test seemed promising. I simply could see it the same effect. You see, this is just before. It appeared that the psychic had been able to change the brain waves as well as the blood pressure of the test subject. If these results could be confirmed, it would be a real breakthrough for parapsychology. To make sure that the scientist would not know what the psychic was doing, it was agreed that he would be isolated in a remote wing of the complex. Since it was founded in 1926, the Institute has been a national center for the study of the brain. But much of the work done here had until recently been kept secret. Sit down, please. The psychic's name was Ignachenko. Very good. According to parapsychologists in Moscow, he was the real thing. All right, we now have... Uh a little over one minute before we will start the selection process. Accompanying him was Zoya, his assistant. The experiment would last an hour, broken down into four 15-minute tests. During each test, Ignachenko would attempt to change either the subject's brain waves or his blood pressure. Or he might be asked to do nothing at all. Now he reaches inside and he takes one of these at random. At the beginning of each test, Ignachenko randomly determined what he would do. What do we have? No. Is the no. no. Okay, so we do nothing for 15 minutes. For the first segment, Ignachenko would not attempt any kind of influence. This will be like a control. The scientists began their measurements, unaware of the psychic selection. For phase two, Ignachenko chose a heart symbol. He would try to change the subject's blood pressure. We are raising the blood pressure, beginning from the pelvis and working along the backbone. Until there's burning in the backbone. That's enough. There's no need to go any further. The spreading has already started. Yeah. <laughs> 
Phase three, the brain. Okay. Ignachenko would try to change okay. brain waves. Stimulation. The pituitary. Stimulation of the pituitary. Okay. Like that. Good, like that. The fourth and last test would again focus on changing brain waves. He will now be very smart. We have stimulated both the right and left brain. When the experiment was complete, the scientists examined their measurements for changes in the subject's brain waves and blood pressure. Any variation from normal would indicate a psychic influence. All right, now let, let's handle them one at a time. What is our conclusion in test number one? If you remember, during the first test, Ignachenko had done nothing. It could be the blood pressure. The scientists saw a change in the subject's blood pressure. Then, uh, number two. In test two, Ignachenko had tried to change blood pressure. The effect was on the brain. I think so. Sergei may disagree. This time, they detected a change in his brain waves. Mm -hmm. now, what do we think on three? Here? With some disagreement, they called the next test correctly for the brain. Maybe we're brain in third case. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. That's brain. What about number four? The last test had been another attempt to change brain waves. None. Nothing. None. Okay. But the scientists found no change at all. All right. Shall we uh, announce the results then? <laughs> the experiment had produced one positive result out of four. Just what would be expected by chance alone. Not very convincing evidence. So what about their previous claims? I had an idea what might be at work here. I suspected that in the past when they examined their data, they had known what effect they were looking for, in scientific lingo, that the test had not been blinded. They confirmed this, raising the possibility that their previous work had not been objective. Look to see some correlation. But one of the group believed that the problem lay elsewhere. I feel strongly that it is impossible to accurately measure these extrasensory phenomena by observing electrophysiological indicators, because the methods are too crude. But remember that modern methods, no matter how complicated, technical, and, and technically perfect and advanced, are of no use whatsoever unless it is conducted in a double-blind fashion. Um, you know, it, of course, the results of a single test are in no way conclusive. But one thing I've learned over the years is that scientists, like the rest of us, have an uncanny ability to find what they're looking for, whether it's there or not. Communism, from its very start, was considered a scientific system. With its failure, many Russians had become suspicious of science altogether. At the same time, private enterprise has begun to develop and operates largely unchecked. A good example is healthcare. It used to be provided exclusively by the state.